I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, this is the 11th Stations of the Cross. It's the first one that we've live streamed um, because of the unusual circumstances we find ourselves in. Um, we have made things that we normally see in person, but this year we're going to share them through the miracle of technology. And I'd like to thank all of the artists who are here today and who took part um, that made this happen. And uh, I hope you will enjoy this presentation. And it will mean a lot to you as you go through uh, this week and prepare for Easter. Let us begin. My Lord Jesus Christ, you have made this journey to die for me with love on and un, 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 uh, excuse me, utterable. And I have so many times unworthily abandoned you, but now I love you with my whole heart. Because I love you, I repent sincerely for having ever offended you. Pardon me, my God, and permit me to accompany you on this journey. You go to die for love of us, for love of me. I wish also, my beloved Redeemer, to die for love of thee. My Jesus, I will live and die always united to you. Let's pray together. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, will your will be done. Be done on earth as in heaven. Give us, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive them who sin against, against us. Save us from, us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. And deliver us from evil. Cindy is the artist of the first station. Cindy, if you can read your... Okay. In early times, there were many journeys taken by the people of God. One example for me is in some of the godly play stories where the journeys take place in the desert. Some of the reminders of the desert were that this was a dangerous and scary place. The wind moves the sand around and you cannot find your way. The wind blows and the sand sinks, stings your face. It is cold at night and hot during the day. We have all traveled on a journey at some point of our lives and many of us are always on a journey. This can change moment by moment that include location, emotions, and circumstances. For me, one journey is Lent. Like years past, I started this Lenten season with some of my regular practices, then something else happened to change this sense of normal. As we are getting closer to Holy Week, I was reminded of some of our traditional practices together leading up to the final hours of Jesus Christ's life. As we travel on this journey, let's remember the reason for this time and that we are not alone. I would like to invite you to log your journey Please gather your journal, paper, or something to write with and write your experience as you go on this journey through each of these stations and post them in your personal space to reflect on during this week and beyond. Thank you, Cindy. Move on to our station. As we go through each station, you're invited to participate at home, even though you'll be muted. It will allow for a better uh, liturgy experience. So it will be myself and one other person, and then you muted in the privacy of your own home. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And they all condemned him and said, he deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. God did not spare his own son. Let us but pray. Okay, let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we walking in the way of the cross may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Deacon Catherine, this is yours. If you could share with us your artist name. Okay. Uh, Mixed media, it's, this is 16 by 20 inches. The trial of Jesus is said to be the most famous unjust trial in recorded history. There are many circumstances of people oppressed, exploited and imprisoned unjustly that are generally unknown to those in the dominant culture. Jesus belonged to an oppressed class. His behavior was disruptive to the power structure of his time. I see a connection to slavery, lynching, chain gangs, and mass incarceration. These circumstances of unjust condemnation are often ignored and dismissed by those who have the power to restore justice. May we who follow Jesus continue to bring attention to past and current wrongful acts, conditions, and policies. Thank you. Second station. Oh. <laughs> Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your, your holy cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. Jesus went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Almighty God, whose beloved son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption, give us courage to take up our cross and follow him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty. Holy and mighty. Holy, holy and mortal, and mortal one. Have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Eleanor Buckholt is over here. Yes, I'm here.
Station two, Jesus takes up the cross for all of us and carries it through jeering crowds in the town and up the hills to Golgotha. We each have crosses to carry, some we choose and some whose burden is placed upon us. The centerpiece of this painting is the silhouette of Jesus carrying the cross and stepping into that golden circle of his destiny. The dark blue surrounding space is filled with crosses bearing the names of the burdens we carry, like poverty, illness, and hatred. We do not know how long we must carry this cross of our destination, but we know that we have faith all things are possible. I used acrylic paint and um, then I went on and typed the words. Originally I thought about having crosses all around it, but it ended up looking too busy. So then I ended up with just bringing clouds to the sky above. Thank you. Station three. Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is the Lord, our God. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried, and carried our, our sorrows. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and holy mighty. And mighty. Holy and mortal one, have mercy. have mercy upon us. The third station, the artist is Anne Fusi. Jesus falls for the first time. The ground rushing up, splintering the skin of the hand that tries to stop the fall. Dead wood fumbled in the dirt. Pain, a dark bloom opening. Last year, I fell on a sidewalk in Louisville, Kentucky and badly sprained an arm and wrist. It was my first serious fall as an adult and the first time I'd ever had to wear a sling. It was a difficult and painful experience on many levels, especially given that I was traveling, attending a writer's residency with people I'd only just met. So when Michelle suggested that I write for the station Jesus Falls for the first time, I thought, well, Yes, of course. The poem started out with a lot of words, but the more I wrote, the less comfortable I felt with so many words. When I was in extreme pain, I said less. As I held my injured arm close to my chest, I also held vulnerability things I would have counted on to define myself to other writers, 
verbal and people-pleasing skills, the strengths of a privileged education became less important to me. These skills are, for me, the hand that tries to stop the fall in the poem. Having fallen and in real pain, I sank deeply into the present moment of being with myself, just as I was, and with the people in my workshop. Like the simple crosses in the attached photo, I found that I wanted the poem, Jesus Falls for the First Time, to be plain and simple, to convey the existential moment in which Jesus loses his footing, stumbles, and hits the ground. For a moment, he lets go of the very task that has been given him. He fumbles the cross. He is in pain, serious pain. And for a moment, we do not know if he will get up again. Thank you, Anne. Fourth station. Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. A sword will pierce your own soul also. And fill your heart with bitter pain. O oh God, who willed that in the passion of your son, a sword of grief should pierce the soul of the blessed Virgin Mary, his mother. Mercifully grant that your church, having shared with her in her passion, may be made worthy to share in the joys of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God. Holy God. Holy and mighty, mighty holy, and holy mortal. mortal one, have mercy have upon mercy us. Upon us. Ken Cribbs offers this artist's reflection. At the fourth station of the way of the cross, as we recall the suffering Jesus meeting his afflicted mother, picture one, my heart and prayers always turn to my late beloved mom, Mrs. Laura Maria Magdalena Teresa Benvenuti Cribs, center of picture two uh, there in the dark clothing. I give thanks to God for the ever blessed Virgin Mary and all mothers who share or who have shared in the sufferings of their children. With the invitation to participate in the way of the cross, my mind raced as it always does to my association with the fourth station. As someone who experienced a lot of painful orthopedic surgeries and other procedures as a kid with spina bifida, I remember my mom's constant presence through these trials. A particular story that has been coming through my mind through this project deals with a surgery and its aftermath that went badly when I was about four or five. I had just gotten out of a spike cast in the upper right hand illustration in the upper right hand of, of the illustration. I had just gotten out of a spike cast. My dad was in combat in Vietnam. 
doctors at Martin Army Hospital in Fort Benning, Georgia, sent my mom off on what was a three hour car ride to bring me home. A metal pin resembling bottom left, but said a dislocated hip had left a bad infection. My mom had a crying child, her baby, in agony on a lonely car ride with no medication or medical guidance. The story goes that my mom was at her wit's end, but valiantly holding it together. My mom offered comforting words as I was lying in the back seat of a blue Plymouth four-door, bottom center. My, fin my mom finally got me home after what must have been an agonizing drive. As her mind raced, an inspiration, I believe, one of many ordinary inspirations of the Holy Spirit came to my mom. My mom gave me a, a warm bath in a bathtub resembling the picture in the bottom right. I was comforted and calmed and life went on. It is probably a great grace that I have no conscious memory of that particularly painful episode. I am left forever with the memory of my mom who in such a self-giving manner shared my pain with me and offered me comfort. To this day, whenever I'm in physical, mental, or emotional stress, the thought instinctively comes to me, I just want to take a warm bath. I'm grateful for my mom's love that offered that comfort to me. Thank you, Ken. The fifth station. The cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whoever does not bear their own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served, but to serve, bless all who following in his steps give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in his name to the suffering the friendless and the needy, for the love of him who laid down his life for us, your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy, God, holy God, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal God. one, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. I am the artist for this station. And the title of my work is They Minister in His Name to the Suffering. I used wood and nitrile rubber gloves. I really took my um, inspiration from a part in the prayer that says that wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in the name, in his name to the suffering. My procrastination to finish my station until the day before it was due, gave me the entirely different perspective for my artwork in light of the pandemic. Originally, I conceptualized hands lifted up in random acts of kindness as we minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. But I am so awed by the sacrifice of doctors, nurses, and first responders who have stepped up to the COVID-19 challenge with intentional acts of bravery that I slipped exam gloves over the hands in honor of their heroic work. 
Thank you, Paige Love. Six station. A woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom mid, men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of men. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes, we are healed. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we beholding by faith the light of his countenance may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Sarah Irwin. Hi, right, so this is, this is my piece of art. Um, I started with the, the middle, um, image of Jesus and the woman um, wiping his face. So this is what I wrote. <clears throat> Early Christians believed this woman's name was Veronica, which means true. I believe that Veronica showed true courage and loyalty in the face of incredible pressure from a very hostile crowd. Her act of courage gave Jesus a few moments of kindness and compassion from out of the blue in an entirely unexpected way. Her name is not mentioned in the Bible. She's only called a woman. This is a chance to recognize her by name and to recognize those who, since her action, have stepped up to show compassion in times where they could expect a very hostile response. It is also a story of encouragement for those of us who want to do the same, even in times we know this will not be appreciated by many. Thank you, Sarah. The station. Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. scorned by all and despised by the people. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, 
you sent your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature. Okay, um, my statement um, is um, that I'd always been, I've always been fascinated by the story uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke of Jesus healing the woman from a 12-year hemorrhage. And I'm curious, since this woman was ritually unclean, how did she deal with the so social isolation that would have come with her medical condition? How was she able to live meaningfully on the far perimeter of her community? How did she finally find the courage to reach out and touch the, frim the fringe of Jesus' garment? in hope of being healed. I decided to look at Station 7 through the eyes of this woman who first knew Jesus as a powerful and charismatic healer and now sees him exhausted, bruised, bleeding, and unable to rise after falling on the pavement leading to crucifixion. What would she have thought, felt, and done? When I began to work on the poem, we were, most of us anyway, unaware of the approaching pandemic. And now that we all experience social distancing, I feel a certain kinship with the woman who lived on the fringes of society. I wonder how we can safely reach out for healing. I'm, fi I'm finding that ha having a community-based pro project to keep me busy during this time has had a certain healing effect. Thanks to the leaders of this project for keeping it up and running in this weird and challenging time. Station seven, seen through the eyes of the woman who'd had an issue of blood. Less than a year ago, I'd seen him surrounded by the throngs, clamoring for miracles, longing to be noticed, hoping to be healed. Desperate for the same after years of living lonely on the margins, I insinuated myself into the crowd, lost my footing, and fell to the pavement within reach of his sandals. I recognized my shaking hand stretching out to touch his hem. Stars flared behind my eyes. My body shuddered. My, affic my affliction ceased. He stopped mid-sentence to ask who had touched him. I stood, confessing, fearing his wrath. But then he called me daughter, restoring me to kin and clan, to synagogue, family meals, gatherings with friends. Today, I hardly recognize the man whose followers head hung on every word. I see him surrounded by sneers instead of smiles sweating blood, trembling with exhaustion, and fell to the stony path leading up the hill to execution. Remembering how he'd rescued me when others failed, I want to return the favor, bathe his oozing elbows with the hem of my shawl, massage his feet with oil, and see him rise to rectify the course of this dark morning but I'll not have my happy ending. Believing in his own peculiar calling, he will refuse to be unfaithful to the one he knows himself to be. He sees beyond my understanding. He pursues a holy mystery. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of the people, and among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Teach your church, O Lord, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty 
and to repent and forsake them that by your pardoning grace, the results of our iniquities may not be visited upon our children and our children's children through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and holy mighty, and mighty. Holy immortal, and mortal one, have mercy upon us. I began these three pieces with the image in the lower left the woman meeting Jesus and finding themselves to be one. They are both suffering and he reminds her of this, but somehow that image felt a little too neat. So I proceeded on to the others. The one in the bottom right, I'm going to read the museum style captions. They are two um, coins that archeologists have found from the period after Jesus' death. The first coin on the top is called the coin of the zealots and the Hebrew words on it say the freedom of Zion. The zealots revolted against Roman occupation but were overpowered. The sanctuary at the center of the temple was set on fire upon orders of Titus, Vespasian's son and commander of the Roman forces. 6,000 helpless women and children were butchered or taken prisoner. Over 500 people were crucified each day after the Roman victory. And the bottom coin, which was minted in gold, is the coin of Vespasian from 70 common era. The words say Judea capta, meaning Judea conquered. The boundless riches from the temple treasury were used to strike these coins. And the woman sitting by the palm tree symbolizes the defeated Judea mourning the loss of her independence. To move away from a museum piece and into this coming suffering, I did the piece on the top, which is simply on brown paper that has been crumpled with acrylics. And my artist statement is as follows. The women of Jerusalem often followed the condemned, offering them sedatives to endure the agony of crucifixion. Jesus turns to them and rejects their ministration, responding in a manner that seems almost cruel, yet not so cruel as the collapse of what little security they have under Roman occupation. It is not just he who will be tortured and slaughtered in the name of Imperial Rome. But why speak of such painful prophecies at this moment? Could it be to shake them from their stupor, focused only on the loss of their beloved rabbi? Are they hoping to sedate him or themselves? Today's Jews remember the destruction of the second temple, Tish Ba'av, on April 14th each year with the reading of Lamentations. Is this the lesson? Lament, mourn, be fully present in the suffering and see yourself in it, not separate from it. My Holy Week devotions must not be museum pieces observed from a distance like framed artifacts of past horrors or glory. I must look open-eyed at the suffering and hope of here and now. My body is fragile and our world is collapsing. Before I can be full of God's love, peace, and hope, I must be emptied of the illusions of separation and safety if only I follow the right teacher through the streets. And you may not be able to see it, but the faces of several of the women in the upper painting are the same face from the lower left painting and the one in the center is actually my own face. Ninth station. 
Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. I am the man who has been afflicted, who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has besieged me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. Remember, O oh Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before it shears is mute, so he opened not his mouth. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Holy God. Holy God. Holy and mighty. Holy and mighty. Holy, immortal, Holy one, immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Let's see. Jesus falling the third time. When we were down into uh, at San Miguel de Allende in uh, Mexico in November, we were on a I had a B and B on a very steep street that uh, was like walking on stone eggshells when you walked it. It, it was seemed more designed for uh, hoofed animals with horseshoes or uh, iron shoes going up there, and any fall that uh, any anyone would do would be treacherous. Treacherous. So. Uh, I couldn't help but think at that point in time, if, thinking ahead to this time, that uh, had Jesus been walking up a street like this and fell, it would have been disastrous. The original painting uh, was much darker than this. And uh, so it was uh, browns and blacks and whites. This is uh, a canvas with acrylic and um, then in lighting it up uh, with with my uh, with the midst of this has been a bad year for us in terms of uh, health issues, although not as bad as they could be given what's happened now. But uh, so with Susan hurt and uh, through the first time from her surgery and uh, in the recent years, right as the COVID nineteen took off, I managed to break a filling and then lose a tooth. So at, uh, in looking at, uh, looking at the darkness of the painting, I figured I would brighten it up with some teeth and leave that one out. And then it was still rather dark. So I uh, lightened up his hair with some gold. And then I was thinking, well, actually it's looking a lot like a wrestler and, and maybe with the gold hair is a little too Trumpian. And, but then, in figuring this situation and the fact that it does show a lot of pain and uh, that it uh, seemed rather appropriate to have him look like a Trumpian wrestler since we're all wrestling with uh, the situation as we are. And, uh, and so it seems more appropriate than, than I had originally imagined. Tenth sedation, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 
And they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They gave me gall to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord God, whose blessed son, our savior gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon. Give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy, God, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal Lord, one, have mercy, have mercy upon, upon us. us. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Um, this took me a really long time to um, be brave enough to put anything on the canvas. I don't paint. I haven't done art since fifth grade, and this was extremely intimidating. Um, Larry offered me his paints, and that alone was intimidating. Uh, the blank canvas was what I really was going to submit. <laughs> in terms of it being COVID-19 and I just, I felt sort of blank. But um, then I remembered, I, I looked around the house for different materials that I could use that I felt more comfortable with. Um, I tried Zentangle and I couldn't remember the moves. I went out in the yard and, and looked for natural materials and, and didn't really find what I was looking for. And then I remembered my grandmother, who was a fabulous artist, did tissue paper art with us when we were children. And so I had some tissue paper and I finally found some glue and Googled, you know, that you mix the water with the glue. And so this is my tissue paper art. <laughs> and um, this, um, my statement reads that uh, this passage originally caught my attention because of the vulnerability inherent in every aspect of this station. I've been reading Brene Brown's book, Dare to Lead as part of a recent vestry assignment Brene writes about the heart of daring leadership and says, you can't get to courage without rumbling with vulnerability. Embrace the suck. None of us had any idea on Ash Wednesday, February 26, 2020, how vulnerable we would all be during this Lenten season. We've been stripped of our garments of everyday living. I feel as though our safety has at times been gambled away as lots were cast for personal protective equipment, PPE, for our frontline medical personnel. The drink of half truths has been offered to us as we thirst for accurate knowledge, and it has been galling. And yet, in the midst of all this, the prayer accompanying this 10th station petitions the Lord God to give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Except joyfully? Well, that is definitely going to take some grace from God because that is not something I myself can do. So here we are, standing in the need of God, naked, sheltering in place, confident that somehow the glory of God shall be revealed. Thank you. Eleventh station, Jesus nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 
when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him. And with him, they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, he was numbered with the transgressors. They pierce my hands and my feet. They stare and gloat over me. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Holy God. Holy God. Holy, holy and, and mighty, holy, holy immortal, immortal one, one. Have, have mercy, mercy upon us. There are so many things that are held in a moment of time. The scenery around the moment, the colors, the breath of the people what is to come from this moment and what came before that led to this moment, all held together in a moment of time. During the season of Lent, I have meditated on the importance of presence and of recognition of variety of things that are happening at this moment in time. The image that I painted using watercolors is a snapshot of the nail that was used to nail Jesus to the cross. As you can see, there is a brown shadow at the top right corner, the shadow of the hammer used, and dark red on the bottom left corner, the blood that came from the nail plunged into Jesus' skin. If you look closely at the nail, you will see a collection of colors in the middle surrounded by gray, representing all the different things that were embodied in that nail, past, present and future. Around the nail are carefully selected prayers from the Good Friday and evening prayer liturgies. These prayers were selected with the current state of the world, the pandemic in mind. I ask you to select a prayer, read it, and meditate on the prayer in your current moment in time, wherever you find yourself. These prayers are written imperfectly because prayers are often clumsy in wording, but at the end of the day, still heard and still legible to God. Twelfth Station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son, then he said to the, to the disciple, behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And then crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. Christ for us became obedient unto death. Even death on a cross. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. 
Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with, with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty. Holy and mighty. Holy, holy and immortal one. one. Have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Station 12 is Jesus Dies on the Cross, and I did this as a mixed media collage. I called it He Hung and Suffered There. This has tissue paper representing the tissues of our body, textured wallpaper to invoke the wood grain of the cross, a dictionary definition of the word cross, pages from the 1898 version of Sunday School Book from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in North America, the devotions for the passion, four small nails left in the, in the cross, black paint evoking the darkness of the moment, and a sponge to remember the vinegar that Jesus was given just before saying, it is finished. The Sunday School book has devotions to be read assigned to the passion. There are many poignant phrases in these verses. I used these to inform the work, and especially these two. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. And we may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. 13th station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. All you who pass by, behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping. My soul is in tumult. My heart is poured out in grief because of the down fall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Her tears ran down, like, ran down her cheeks. And she has none to comfort her. Lord Jesus, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. Holy, holy God, God, holy, holy and, and mighty, holy, holy immortal, immortal one, one. Have, mercy. have mercy upon us. faith in which the mother receives the body of her son in michelangelo's version christ is dead in my version the leaning figure is still alive and supported in large part by the mother's embrace the figure of the mother has opened her arms to receive the figure of the son leans into these arms in a pose of surrender and relief the figure of the sun is rough, partially distorted and positioned in a humbled pose. Grief, failure, pain, and unworthiness have humbled his all too human pride, strength, and arrogance. To be received in the arms of grace is utter relief. I chose to realize this work in bronze because it is durable, touchable material. The patina of the bronze can even be enhanced by the oils of human touch. This piece is intended to elicit a visceral reaction, both emotionally and literally. 
Observers can run their hands over the figures, feel the roughness of the Christ figure and the cool smoothness of his mother's back. The spontaneous marks of my hands left in the clay and the marks of the heated tools that melted and branded the wax are intentionally left visible and tangible. The drama of this piece arises from the broad and emotional gestures of the figures, its overall composition in the form of a precariously balanced triangle and its very texture. The Christ figures is the Christ figure's skin is spiked with boils and his upper body hunched and strained with broken fingers and an arm twisted back and bent. The seated maternal figure embraces the broken figure to hold and comfort. The unworthy falls into the arms of the one who accepts. Fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not abandon me to the grave nor let your holy ones see corruption. O oh God, your blessed son was laid in a tomb in a garden and rested on the Sabbath day. Grant that we who have been buried with him in the waters of baptism may find our perfect rest in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy, God, holy and, and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. <clears throat> the artist statement for Alicia Escobar. This painting was fun to make. I included the vines and tree roots because it makes the scene look more like the natural world. They can also be a metaphor that life grows even where there is death. Closing prayers. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and death and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. And we pray that as by his death, he has recalled us to life. So by his love, may he may raise us to eternal joys, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. To Christ our Lord, who loves us and washed us in his own blood, and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Are you ready? This tree, this individual is way up there on my list of all time favorite trees. It's a Southern live oak and it lives at Shingle Creek Regional Park in Osceola County, Florida near my childhood home. I only discovered this tree in the last few years when this new park opened near where my mother lived. The tree had fallen before I met it, probably blown over during the devastating hurricanes that blew through central Florida in 2004. The tree lies mostly on its side, but it lives. It still shelters birds and lizards and insects, and it still provides shade for the park visitors. And this tree gives me hope. This concludes the 11th anniversary of Artist Stations of the Cross. Once again, an outstanding, spirit-filled, relevant, prayerful, and just fantastic offering from each of the artists. Thank you so much for offering your gifts that God has bestowed upon us in this holy week. As we journey towards the cross, you have enhanced our journey together. Thank you.